أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All perfect praise is due to Allah the Almighty I testify that none is worthy of worship except Allah And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final prophet and messenger May Allah exalt his mention as well as that of his families and all his companions Today, we will begin with the first surah of Juz Amma, Surah Amma, and it is also called Surah An Naba. An Naba means the news. Amma or An Naba is a Meccan surah. There is no disagreement amongst the scholars in classifying it as a Meccan surah. As we mentioned last time, the Meccan surahs with regards to the topic it addresses, it focuses on the unseen, namely the day of resurrection, reward and punishment, meaning hell and paradise or paradise and hell, addressing the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal and that He is the Almighty, the only deity worthy of being worshipped. And Surat Amma is no different. Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the people with the surah and it had a style to it. The shortness of the verses, the strength and powerful tone it used addressing the people. Now, before we go into the, the uh, actual explanation or elaboration of the verse, on the verses of the chapter, I would like to quote some words of one of the scholars. But I would like to 
mention one point is that when we are addressing the, the issue of Quran, when the matter is related to the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, we need to really concentrate and be attentive with the hearts before the ears. Because this is the best speech. These are the words of Allah the Almighty. He said, and these were beautiful words, he said this surah is acting like a warning. It acted like a warning to the disbelievers, idol worshippers, the atheists at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It was very powerful in its speech. It was as if Allah Azza wa Jal was calling upon the people, calling upon people who were deep asleep or people who were drunk. It was as if a message conveyed to them, people wake up, look around, ponder and reflect. To this universe is a creator. This universe was created by Allah. This universe was created by a creator who runs its affairs, who decrees its matters, and who will hold people to accountability, and that there will be consequences to the deeds and actions you perform on earth. And the issue of resurrection in particular, in the Qur'an was repeated a lot, was addressed a lot. And there were reasons for that repetition. There were reasons for Allah Azza wa Jal addressing the issue over and again. The scholars mentioned some of these reasons. Why Allah Azza wa Jal kept on clearing doubts and clarifying misconceptions. Why did Allah Azza wa Jal repeatedly establish evidence and proof against those idol worshippers and atheists. Number one, that idol worshipping was widespread at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and particularly amongst the Arabs of Mecca. Number two, people have lived with this idol worship for ages. They've inherited this from their fathers and forefathers. So their brains froze. They could not perceive what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about. They could not perceive the issue and the matter of resurrection. Bringing something back to life after it had died. And one incident that proves this matter is when Ubay ibn Khalaf came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this in reference to the last few verses of chapter Yasin and he had bones of a dead body and he smashed them with his hand and turned them into dust and sprinkled them in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said would your God could your God bring this back to life? Resurrect this back to life? So their brains were frozen. They could not perceive. They could not understand. They could not believe that this can happen. Number three is their deep emotion and attachment to these idols that they were worshipping. They were carrying them everywhere they went. They were making them from everything. From stones, from wood, from dates. And the famous story that was told by Umar radiallahu anhu after he became Muslim he said, one time I made an idol 
out of dates. And then a short while later, I became hungry one day and I found nothing to eat but my idol, so I ate my God. They were, they were attached to these idols they were worshipping. And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that loyalty and attachment to their idols as in chapter Sad, verse 6. وَانْطَلَقَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْهُمْ أَنْ يُمْشُوا وَاصْبِرُوا عَلَىٰ آلِهَتِكُمْ Which means, and the eminent among them went forth saying, continue and be patient over the defense of your gods. Lastly, number four, is their fear of losing their prestigious positions, their rank amongst their people. Because as soon as they submit to La ilaha illallah, their leadership and the fellowship of their followers to them would drop immediately. Because their followers will be servants to Allah Azza wa Jal and they would be following Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is natural and by default. And the arrogance of the elite amongst them, or a lot of them at least, and pride and fear of losing such position, was behind a lot of them denying arrogantly and proudly denying and rejecting the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reason for the revelation of this chapter, as mentioned by Imam al-Qurtubi, rahmatullah alayhi, he said, Ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, the cousin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Quraysh used to sit in their gatherings and ask one another, what is this that Muhammad came with? What is this message he's calling to? What is this resurrection he's talking about? So they were asking one another about the message of Islam and what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with and thus Allah azza wa jal revealed the chapter. And likewise, likewise was mentioned by Ibn Jarir and Ibn Abi Hatim on the authority of Al-Hasan al-Basri rahmatullahi alayhi may Allah have mercy upon him. There are four opinions regarding the first verse. The first verse says, عَمَّ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal gave an introduction. And by the way, this surah is broken into segments. And we will address every set of verses, every segment by itself. The first few verses, the first five verses of the chapter was like an introduction to the matter. Allah Azza wa Jal says, عَمَّ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ عَنِ النَّبَئِ الْعَظِيمِ الَّذِي هُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ كَلَّا سَيَعْلَمُونَ which means, about what are they asking one another? About the great news or happening or event over which they are in disagreement? No, they are going to know. Then no. 
they are going to know. This, the first verse, is a question. Allah Azza wa Jal was not asking this question because He is unaware of the answer. As the scholar said, this question is a form of condemning what the Quraysh were asking one another. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is all aware, all knowing of everything that takes place, everything that is concealed, everything that did not happen. Had it happened, how it would have happened. Allah is all knowing. But it's a way of condemning Quraysh and the question they were asking. Because some of them were arrogant and proud and due to that, they rejected and denied the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now the news or event that is mentioned in the second verse was interpreted by different scholars differently. Mujahid rahmatullahi alayhi said, it refers to the Qur'an. While Ibn Zayd said, it refers to the day of judgment. Qatada said, it refers to resurrection. And Ibn Abbas said, it refers to the legislation with which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came. Sheikh al-Shanqiti, Muhammad Amin, the famous scholar with the famous tafsir of Qur'an, Adwa'ul Bayan, said, it appears that the news Allah Azza wa Jal talks about in the second verse is the day of judgment and resurrection because of the verses that followed that in the surah. Many people, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the message, started accusing Muhammad of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of being a liar, a magician, a fortune teller. They disagreed amongst themselves as to what to call him. And there's another form of disagreement where some approved, accepted, and embraced Islam, and others totally denied that. So it could be referring to the two types of these disagreements. The dis disagreement amongst the disbelievers and what they described Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to be, and disagreement in terms of the two parties or two teams people broke into with regards to the reaction to the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah azza wa jal threatens them. They are going to know. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi said that the type of knowledge Allah azza wa jal is talking about here is the knowledge of certainty, meaning they are going to know when they are resurrected on the day of judgment that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was telling the truth. It also means they are going to know when they are resurrected and see the punishment, that the punishment is going to be the consequence of their denial and rejection to the message. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them, you are going to know. You will see that with your own eyes. You will live that after being resurrected. This resurrection that you're denying and refusing to believe in. No, they are going to know. Then Allah repeats it. To emphasize, to threaten, to move the hearts, perhaps. Some will take heed. No, they are going to know, then no, they are going to know. With this, 
we conclude the first session and we will continue in the following session insha'Allah subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik